welcome you all to the next session on NOHA series. This video is about layout diagram and especially the first part of the video we are going to concentrate only on the design rule aspects of the layout diagram. A layout is a set of rectangles where each rectangle represents a certain layer. So again here similar to stick diagram we are going to extract the layer information in stick diagram, we have represented each layer using color codes and straight patterns. So the same kind of rules that we are going to follow here also. But what is the difference between stick diagram and layout diagram is in stick diagram, the size of the transistors, width of the layers, spacing between the layers, wire length, etc. are not mentioned. Stick diagram was just acting as an interface between your actual circuit schematic and the layout diagram and now in this first part of the video we will just concentrate on different design rule aspects of layout diagram the main objective of layout design rules is to build reliably functional circuits in a minimum possible area the rules are defined in terms of layer dimensions spacings and overlaps we can define the width which means the minimum width of the rectangle the minimum spacing between two rectangles what has to be maintained and the overlap region will specify how much a rectangle must surround another rectangle on a different layer two types of layout design rules exist for industrial and academic applications industrial design rules are usually specified in microns but all universities use scalable design rules which means the proposed scalable design rule is completely based on a single parameter called lambda. Therefore, we also define the layout design rules as lambda based design rules. In a lambda based design rule, this particular parameter called lambda is defined as channel length divided by 2, where channel length is usually denoted by capital L, so which means your channel length is going to be twice the lambda. In a lambda based design, all dimensions are expressed in terms of lambda. And the advantage of this particular design is that any existing layout can be reused for a new purpose by simply changing the lambda value. For example, if we are working on a 360 nanometer process, which has a minimum polysilicon width of 0.36 micrometer, for this process, lambda will be 0.18 micrometer and then we can say that we have 360 nanometer process. So this is the overview of layout design rules or lambda based design rules. Now let us go very specifically into the spacing, what spacing has to be maintained or what width of the polysilicon or the metal layer has to be maintained for a layout diagram. Before we proceed with the design rules, we have to understand why they have developed a set of scalable lambda based design rules that covers a wide range of manufacturing process. Because these rules are going to specify two important things. One is the minimum width to avoid a breaks in the line and the minimum spacing that has to be maintained to avoid shots between the lines. Now here we have the metal lines, diffusion lines, polysilicon lines, each one are indicated using their color codes. And since it is a layout diagram, we need to draw it in terms of rectangles because each rectangle is representing a certain layer along with its color code. Now from this particular diagram, we can understand that the minimum width of the polysilicon layer that has to be maintained is two lambda and the minimum width of the diffusion line should be 2 lambda and the minimum width of the metal line should be 3 lambda as metal lines run over a more uneven surface than other conducting layers to ensure their connectivity. And here we can understand the polysilicon to polysilicon spacing should be maintained as 2 lambda and the spacing between two different diffusion layers should be 3 lambda and the spacing between two metal layers should be 2 lambda. From this diagram, we can understand that the diffusion layer to polysilicon spacing. This spacing has to be maintained as lambda to prevent the lines overlapping 
to form unwanted capacitance and these metal lines they can pass over both diffusion and polysilicon layer without creating any electrical effect and the next thing is the spacing between the metal layer and the polysilicon layer which has to be maintained as lambda from this diagram we can understand that this is going to be a polysilicon layer and this is a p diffusion layer and n diffusion layer surrounding the p diffusion layer usually we have an n well region and surrounding the n diffusion layer also we have a p well region but most of the layout diagrams concentrate only on depicting the n well regions so here what we need to understand is that the n wells or any wells which has to surround the transistor which means because when a polysilicon layer is crossing a p diffusion layer it is a p mos transistor and when this polysilicon layer is crossing this n diffusion layer it creates an n mos transistor so these wells must surround the transistors by 6 lambda so therefore this implies that there should be a spacing of 12 lambda between the opposite transistor flavors which means between your p mos transistor and n mos transistor you should have a 12 lambda spacing and the next is about the wiring track a wiring track is the space required for all the wiring connections usually it should be maintained with 4 lambda width and 4 lambda spacing from the neighbor so totally it should be 8 lambda 4 lambda width and 4 lambda spacing between the two different wiring tracks and finally the contact width has to be maintained as 2 lambda now to draw the layout diagram there are certain general layout guidelines which are going to be very similar to your stick diagram in stick diagram we have just used straight lines to indicate any of the p diffusion layer or n diffusion layer or be it any metal or polysilicon layer but here in layout diagram we use a set of rectangles because each rectangle is only going to represent a certain layer with all its color codes or striped patterns so here also for drawing a layout diagram we are going to start with fixing the vdd and vss lines which runs at the top and bottom of the design and then we have the vertical polysilicon for each gate input and we have to order all these polysilicon gate signals using the euler's method and then the connectivity requires to place nmos close to vss and pmos close to vdd connection has to complete the logic using poly metal and contacts hope you all have understood the basics of layout design rules we have also seen the differentiation between the stick diagram and the layout diagram and we have also discussed the general layout guidelines which are much similar with respect to the stick diagram all three parts of the video links on stick diagram are shared in the description box below those who haven't watched those videos please do watch them and come back to the second part of the video on layout diagram because the euler's method of drawing the stick diagram is going to be again the base for drawing the layout design also so in the second part of the video we will take a boolean logic function and try to draw the layout diagram and one important point we are going to discuss in the second part of the video is the estimation of area which means the total physical layout area we are going to determine in the second part of the video until then stay safe thank you all for watching this video through electronics insight channel